Hi again, everyone. Welcome or welcome back to healandlearn.com. For those of you who are new, my name is Zarina. I run healandlearn.com and I also offer coaching and consulting um, for people who would like to start their own business in line with their life purpose and in line with all areas of their lives. While preparing for the launch of my program this Saturday on the 21st of September, I came across uh, a very interesting system, ancient system um, for health. Uh, the, the knowledge comes from the Tengras, which were an old Bulgarian tribe that lived in the area of Mongolia, maybe a bit um, west of Mongolia. And they were known to have this system of health um, that, that used energy from the universe and that used the rhythms of Earth. So we know in nature everything has its rhythm. Night follows day, cold for, follows warmth, the seasons change all the time. Um, dryness follows rain and so on. There's a song after the, the sun comes the rain again. So it's the um, circulation of life. It's, um, you, we, we know that also the processes in our bodies don't happen at the same time. They're not chaotic. For everything there's a rhythm. We eat at a certain time, we go to bed at a certain time, we make love at a certain time, we read a book, we go to the toilet at another time. It all doesn't happen all at once. They're bodily processes that are very strictly regulated and they follow a rhythm. So this rhythm, the bodily rhythm, actually follows the um, rhythm of the ethereal body. This is something that I explained in my video to which I'll put a link below. Um, so again, please check it out because a component of this system is also included in, the, in this video. Um, so as we have rhythms, as our ethereal body follows the pulsations of the nature, so naturally our bodies should be aligned to the rhythm of the nature. Just as an example, if you think, if you, if you know anybody who, um, go, who does night shifts and works at night, you usually notice that after a while, after a few years, their um, health starts deteriorating. This is be because the body doesn't follow the natural rhythm of the earth. Um, and so it doesn't get the extra, the ethereal body doesn't get the extra energy uh, from mother nature and so the physical body doesn't get the extra energy from the ethereal body. There is a way that we're going to talk about right now. It's a seven step process. I don't know if it's a process. Let's call it a system. Um, I would just like to call them natural habits, daily natural habits that if you follow it would lead you to increase your uh, your bodily energy, your health, your um, overall tonus and um, self-confidence as well. So before I, I go into the seven step uh, system, let me explain how um, the rhythms of nature are connected to the elements. So if you think about uh, summer, the summer is of course warm, light, it corresponds to the elements um, of fire and air and as in nature uh, the day is you know um, as above so below and as the big so the small so a day is just a representation in miniature of the whole cycle of the year so a summer is represented by the day the characteristics of the spring are that it's wet because of the melting of the snow and it's still a bit cold um, so spring naturally corresponds to the morning part of the day. Then we have the summer that corresponds to the, you know, the actual day. Then usually in autumn, the ground has absorbed the, sun, the sunlight and the warmth from, the, from uh, the summer. And therefore the elements that correspond to autumn are usually uh, fire, so the warmth, the heat, fire and earth, because it's dry, earth is dry. This part of, um, of the day is the evening, before the sun sets. And finally, the night corresponds to coldness and it's equal to winter in the larger scheme, the larger rhythm of nature, and it corresponds to the elements of earth and water. So now let's go through this seven step process for uh, living in line with nature, with the pulsations of nature. So what do you do usually when you wake up? This is step one. What do you do when you wake up? Do you just jump out of bed, run and take a shower in the morning and rush to work, drink a coffee? 
as if you're, I don't know, if you've been in the desert and you haven't had water for a long time. This is exactly what you shouldn't do because in the morning, the first step to get you connected to nature is to bring back the consciousness to your body, to make it alive because it has been asleep. So rather than staying asleep and going through life asleep, because it has to do with consciousness, not only with sleepiness. So the first thing you have to do in the morning is to wake up your body. How do you do that? First of all, don't open your eyes rapidly. Open them slowly, gently, and then start hugging and caressing your body and slowly pressing it, every part of your body. You do this for about five minutes, like really massage your body and enjoy it. And, and start feeling alive, start feeling the consciousness of life. This is your step number one. It sounds really uh, simple, but, uh, but it's probably the most essential thing to bring in consciousness to your day. And since the morning corresponds to the element of moist, which, which is linked to air and to water, step number two is to actually give it that. Give it air and give it water. Open the window, let some draft in and start showering. This is a morning routine. I know some people like to shower in the evening, which is also fine in addition to a morning shower, but the morning shower is essential because it is, as a matter of fact, connected to the elements of water and, um, and air. Um, okay, so what, how should you shower? In the morning, um, the Tengras or the, the tribe, the old Bulgarian tribe where the knowledge comes from, uh, they used to take um, water that they let in the room to have room temperature overnight. I don't know if there was an, any other reason other but temperature, but I would still recommend you to shower with a bit cooler water because the morning is not supposed to be warm. It still carries the um, inheritance of night you know, of, of the elements of night. So in step two, apart from nicely showering, you should activate the downward flow of energy out of the two flows that I explained in the video, I've linked it below. So you stand up straight and you let in the downward flow. You start charging your body with energy. And while you do that, you inhale and exhale 21 times. I know at first this can be quite exhausting because, you know, breathing deeply for 21 times, your cells get exposed to too much oxygen, uh, which makes you dizzy. It's absolutely normal. And this is, uh, as a matter of fact, one of the basis of, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of um, this regression called um, holotropic breathing. It has to do with deep breathing for about 10 minutes. And it uh, almost acts, um, acts like drugs. But this is a different topic that I'm going to tell you another time. Now, the exercise involves breathing deeply 21 times. If you get dizzy, then no matter how so funny it sounds, you splash water on your face 21 times. These are the elements of water and air in the morning. Okay, let's go now to step three. So at around lunchtime, you should start preparing your body for the peak of day and um, connect to the elements of the day, which are uh, the elements of warmth, air and fire. So you do this, uh, I, I can imagine you're sitting in an office, so you're not, you know, you don't always have access to uh, light or to be outside or to fresh air or to do any, any sort of exercises in front of people. I know this can be embarrassing, so I'm not making you do any of that, but to prepare your your, your body to attune it to the rhythm of nature, you have to breathe in deeply uh, and start imagining already, prepare your body for the upcoming peak of the day, which happens at around one o'clock, wherever you are in the world. So how do you prepare? You start massaging your head. Okay, I have a head, but nevertheless, you make, you tap your head, you, you make small massages for about five minutes, like that. Step number four, at around one o'clock at noon, you're ready to start absorbing the energy of warmth and to align with this energy that corresponds to the elements of uh, air and fire. What you have to do is again, uh, breathe 21 times, but this time activate the downward flow, the, the flow 
um, the energetic flow that comes from Earth goes through all your chakras and goes out to the universe. While you do that, or afterwards, um, try and be outside, possibly wherever there's sun. I understand that you, you can't always go outside and, you know, people have to work. Sometimes there's no sun, you may live in places that are constantly cloudy and so on. In which case, um, you find a lamp or a light body somewhere around. So what you do is you start looking at the sun for about five minutes, but not directly, of course, you don't want, you don't want to blind yourself. You start squinting and, um, you know, play with it. Let the sun go through your eyelashes and, uh, of course, you can blink as much as you want, but you should let sun go in your left eye. I have no clue why the left eye is so important, but the system says let light in for about five minutes through your left eye. When I'm saying this, and this is maybe something that I forgot to say at the beginning, is that you shouldn't consider these exercises as purely physical exercises. In the end, they're meditative exercises. It's about putting consciousness in what you do. It's about you consciously connecting to nature. And this will unconsciously, um, if you do it over time, this, was, this will unconsciously connect you to the rhythm of nature and this will become more natural. Okay, so let's go to the next step. When the elements of the day, of air and uh, fire, start giving some of their power to the energies of the night, but a little bit, we become uh, more prone towards the earth, like, like the elements uh, that correspond to autumn. So we have still the warmth, the leftover of the day, but we also have the premonition of the coming night. We have the earth that carries the idea of coolness eventually. So what do we do? We should start preparing our bodies uh, for the coming night or for absorbing the energies of these elements. Uh, and we do this by um, slowly turning, starting to turn our feet around, maybe even massaging them lightly, but not really, just becoming conscious of our feet. And now we are already connecting, we are ready to connect to the energies of the real evening, which is um, to connect to earth. So we take, ideally, we take off our um, socks and we walk barefoot, ideally outside in the dark, when it's already dark, maybe one hour before you go to sleep. Um, if you can't go outside, just walk barefoot at home. But, you know, ideally connect consciously to the element of earth and breathe deeply. You connect. Okay, I, I think it's, no, it's not one hour before I have to go to sleep. I was just about to take off my shoes. It's too early. <laughs> so when it's night, step seven, uh, what you do is you want to turn off the body off of consciousness and the way you do it is by giving it signals. So step seven involves you to sit on the edge of your bed or to sit somewhere just before going to sleep after you're all brushed up and, pre and prepared to go to sleep and you start touching your whole body again. But you don't touch it like in the morning intensively, you know, you don't squeeze yourself, you don't massage yourself. You gently tap it. And as a matter of fact, this should be very slow. So in a way you're turning off bit by bit your entire body. You, for example, you touch yourself somewhere, you keep your hand there for about two, three seconds, and then you move to the next place. And this is how you turn off your body for sleep. In the night, it's recommendable that you connect to the um, energy of the coldness. This is how you're aligned to the energy of the night and the natural energy of winter as well so therefore it's advisable that you sleep at a place that it's really you know with a lower temperature everybody knows that that people sleep better uh, in colder rooms um, but if your room is very warm and you can't do that it's a matter of meditation you just imagine yourself feeling cool and this is how you connect to the energy of uh, cold coolness when you do when you do this regularly, you will see actual physical benefits of the exercises. And again, I'd like to remind you that these are not simple physical exercises. 
there are meditations, there are meditative states where you connect consciously, you put consciousness into each flow of, of nature and this is how you connect and this is how your, um, your physical body starts replenishing its energy and only when you're fully in your energetics you keep away disease. Um, some would say, okay, but most of the diseases that I get are actually viruses. How do I get that? Well, viruses can only live wherever there's compromised energetics. First, your energetics is compromised and this makes space for viruses to come. This is, of course, on an energy level, on a physical level, you can explain it in a different way, for example, by a dropped immune system and so on. But please try this method and uh, report back what the results were. After a while, you'll see that your body will naturally attune. You will not feel alone, you'll feel connected to nature. We're just so disconnected these days, but as a matter of fact, you should never feel lonely. This tree is alive. This tree is alive. Thank you for watching. Check out healandlearn.com. We have awesome programs and amazing consultants.